Hello. Okay, so in this one, we're going to take the preset browser thingy we were working on in one of the previous videos, uh, but we're going to add buttons to load the previous preset or the next preset. And actually, I've already added the buttons to the UI just so we didn't have to go through that step in the video. So I've got these two buttons here. There's no code for them yet, but this one's going to load the previous preset. This one's going to load the next preset. Okay, so let's code this. So let me see, we'll put this in just here. So these buttons are called BTN preset zero and BTN preset one. And by giving them these names with numbers, it makes it a bit easier to uh, work with them because they're essentially doing the same task, just one's loading the previous, one's loading the next. So we want to try and reuse as much code as possible. So first of all, we'll get a reference to them. And we're going to put them in a const called btn preset. And what I'd often do here is have a loop. I'd create an array, have a loop, and grab the components and stick them in the array. And we're going to do it a little differently today. We're going to use a different function called content.getAllComponents. And this function will get multiple components and create an array uh, for us automatically. And the way it knows which components to grab is we put in this string here. We put the name of the button we want, or the component we want, and then it will grab all components with that name. But we don't want to just put btn preset because we have a button over here called btn preset browser. So if we do this with btn preset, in fact, let's have a look. We can see what it does in the script watch table here. So let's just open that in the pop-up. You can see it's given us btn preset browser and the two preset zero and one buttons. So we need to make sure it's only giving us these two. And the way we can do that is by using a little regex expression. If we put backslash backslash D, it's now looking for a control that's called btn preset and then followed by a number, which uh, suits us perfectly here. So this um, way of getting components into an array isn't suitable in all situations. It does depend on the naming you're using and also the names of other controls, because you might have other controls called btn preset with a number and then other stuff. So you do have to be a bit careful, but if you um, know what you're doing and you're keeping track of things, it should be okay. So now let's have a look. So now it's only got the two buttons in it. But we still need a loop because we're going to assign a callback to these buttons. So we're going to have 4x in btn preset x.set control callback on btn preset control. And then we'll declare that function. And now we need to find out which of the buttons trigger the callback. So to do that, we're going to create a variable called index. We're going to put the name of our array, btn preset, and call the index of function on that and pass in the component that triggered the callback. So this will tell us which button was clicked. We'll console print index. So now when I click this one, the previous button, it should show zero. And when I click this one, it should show one. We're seeing the number twice because it's triggering the callback once when I click the button and once when I release the mouse. So we'll filter that out in just a moment. Uh, so we'll do that now. We can say if not value return. So when the mouse is up, it'll just return. That return just means it's going to exit this function. And then we want to use the button index zero or one to decide which uh, action to take. So let me just show you the function we're going to use. I think it's load. Yeah, this one. So we've got engine.load next user preset. And we've also got load previous user preset. So we're going to be calling these functions. And they take a single parameter that's either true or false. And we'll look at what that does in just a moment. So we want to trigger the load previous uh, user preset function when the index is zero, and we want to trigger the load next user preset function when the index is one. So we could do that with an if statement. We could say if index um, equals zero. Another way of writing that is if not index. Then we could have engine.load previous user preset, and we'll just set the um, parameter to false for now. We'll, we'll look at that in a moment. Else engine.load next user preset. So that's one way of doing it, and this uh, this should work if we click these buttons. So we can see it's going through the presets. 
Okay, so this parameter here, this decides if the next and uh, the previous and next buttons can jump between different folders within the preset browser. So we actually only have one category here and one bank, so it wouldn't make a difference if we set that to true or false. Let's just change that to true. It still can only go between these. But if we add other folders, it will make a difference. So let's add a new folder. We'll call it category two. And let's add some presets in here. Preset six. Preset seven. Okay, so now we've got two folders of presets. So now when I click either of these buttons, and because it's set to true here, it can jump between these folders. Now I might have to recompile. Let's do that. Uh, what the? Maybe they, those have to be false. <laughs> Let's try that. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, for whatever reason, those have to be false. Let me just check those function definitions again. Oh, sorry. It's stay in directory. I thought it was uh, change directory. So yeah, so if they're false, it will go between the different folders. So I see preset one, two, three, five, six, seven, four, one. And if it's true, it will just stay in the currently selected folder. So let's do that again. And we'll have a bit more room here. So we're in category one, so it's going to stay in category one. If we go to category two, it will stay in category two. So it's up to you, whatever um, behavior you want, you can determine with these variables. And you could probably even make that a user customizable uh, option as well. If we have this set to false, uh, so it can go between different directories, just watch what happens if I keep clicking through. You see it's n now not selecting one, but it's showing preset four. That's a little quirk because um, we have that preset four here outside of anything, but the highest preset browser is picking that up. So you probably, um, well, let's delete it and we'll get rid of that issue there. So now it will just stay within the folders. Okay, that's all for this one. The snippet for this video will be available on Patreon. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, click the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.